can't see it in this shot. There we go again. What a flop. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. Just a little late on the draw, that was all. Yep. Over to the right of me is a set of mountains. And, uh, geez, down at the very base of the mountains off to the right of me there is actually a pretty good, um, well, that guy's not going to let me in. Uh, it's actually a pretty good uh, layering of snow. Yep. Fresh snow, even. Yep. Quite a bit. And uh, hence the camera. But uh, boy, yeah, I guess I kind of missed it. Oh, I might be able to, might be able to get a little bit of it in the picture here. Perhaps if I zoom in a little bit for you. Yeah, you can see that over there. That's not salt. Nope. Close as we are to Utah, Utah. <laughs> Close as we are to Utah. Slow down, go. Don't get so excited. <laughs> Close as we are to Utah. That is not salt. Nope. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, you might be able to. Yeah, you can see it. That white stuff down there at the bottom. It's not a cloud either. So, there you go. We actually found ourselves some snow. Yep, here in early October. Early, almost mid-October, I guess. Jeez, time's just flying. Boy, has a way of doing that. It just... <laughs> It can, it can, it can kind of do either or. It can, it can, it can kind of either go real slow, like turtle slow, depending on what's going on, or it can just like fly by, like a, like a, I don't know, I don't know what, like, yeah, like an eagle. It can do either one, depending on what's going on. Isn't that interesting how that works? Very much, I think. I think it's very interesting how that works. And I mean, and it can do it not not just in the uh, in the long term sense, you know, like oh, this month just blew by, or this month was just slow forever, right? It can do it in the momentary sense too, within like, uh, you know, like five minutes can, can seem like 30 seconds or it can seem like an hour, you know, isn't that funny how that works? It's kind of just the way uh, you perceive it and the amount of data that you're taking in and analyzing and uh, decoding, I suppose, if you will. I don't know if we could use that kind of word for it. But I, that's really what you're doing. You're decoding all the information that, uh, that uh, comes to appear itself to, uh, or present itself to your senses, I mean, right? Because it's all really just an illusion. I mean, truly. Because when you think about it, like, you know, <laughs> we see this thing and we say that's light, right? And really all it is, is just this uh, frequency that's vibrating at a super high rate, right? A high frequency. So fast that uh, it creates heat. And that heat becomes what we call light. And then when that light falls upon your eyeball, you have little receivers in there and they receive that signal of frequency and uh, send it on into your brain where your brain analyzes it and thinks about it and uh, decodes it and tells you that that's what you would call light, you know, just electrical frequencies basically. The same thing with your ears, you know, with sound. I mean, sound's even a better analogy of it because sound uh, vibrates at such a low frequency that it doesn't become light. Uh, that's why it's still just a sound. But it's the same thing. It just, you know, but it's a better analogy because, uh, you know, it vibrates, uh, you know, whatever frequency it may be, you know, and uh, then vibrates 
creates your drum, like uh, just like a drum on a on a uh, drum set, like a floor drum or something, vibrating. You know, picks up a, a, another vibration and basically um, like a like a tuning fork vibrating to the sound of a, a similarly tuned tuning fork. You know, one will. If one rings, the other old one will begin to ring. It's kind of like a quantum kind of thing, I guess. And then, uh, so your eardrum vibrates whatever frequency hits on it, and then uh, well, the electri electrical signal is created, fires off over your brain. You say, "Well, that's sound." But uh, well, if you didn't have an eardrum and if you didn't have an eye, none of that stuff would actually exist. So. That's the that's the uh, ideology that it's all just an illusion because it is nothing exists without the eye of the receiver. Oh geez, what am I doing? I'm getting all philosophical on you. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to do that. Yep. I didn't mean to go there. I won't hold you hostage. Yep. It's just crazy talk. Just forget everything that I was just saying. It probably doesn't mean anything at all. Never mind. <laughs> it's probably not true. So. Yep. Wow. What a view. Oh my God. Okay. This is worthy of taking the camera down and getting a shot of. I don't know. It might be too bright for you. Shoot. Uh, yep, yep, yep. I think I might have missed it. Well, I mean, that is a crazy, crazy shot right there. That's absolutely beautiful. Wow. Yep, alright. So it actually uh, just got pretty uh, gusty, windy. I mean, uh, cruising along here, he's bound on I-80 through Wyoming, and Wyoming is known to be pretty windy, and uh, there's been these warning signs, you know, digital warning signs flashing, you know, every 10 or 15 miles, letting us know that uh, 40 plus mile an hour winds, 60, mi 60 plus mile an hour gusts, and uh, <laughs> there was nothing there, <laughs> I was like, huh. Yep, not as far as I can tell, unless uh, unless it's behind me and flowing with me, I don't feel a thing, but we just turned a corner a little while ago, and sure enough, yeah, it's pretty windy, but uh, I don't know, not so bad right now, it's not too bad, it very well could just be pushing me on down the road, and that's why I don't feel it, that does happen, so running uh, west and east. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised at that at all. So, anyhow, thought I'd just bring you on in here and uh, get a look at the, uh, the snow. It's, uh, it's had that settle on the ground. There's actually a, a very light, light dusting of it uh, at actually the very level that I'm that I'm currently driving at. Uh, very light dusting of it, and it's off know away from the interstate quite a ways I haven't seen any like directly on the shoulder or anything yet but uh, but if there was it would definitely be sticking because it is 39 degrees right now and we're at an elevation of 7,550 feet so um, if any did fall along the shoulder trust me it will be showing oh there we go there's some right there that's right off to the right here. Yep. Not very deep, but it's definitely a dusting of it. Oh yeah, right there. See? See what I said? Never speak too soon. Like, just don't do it. Like, if it's something that you don't want to have happen or deal with, just don't say it. <laughs> don't be like, oh, that never happens, because blam, it's... It'll happen. There I said, uh, I haven't seen any alongside the shoulder, and then bam, within 30 seconds, there it was. Huh. Yeah, 
I gotta, I see, I got, I'm learning to be far more careful <laughs> before I say things like that. But of course, uh, a good percentage of the time I'm doing it uh, for you, for the camera, for the video. And, uh, yeah, rather than just sitting here babbling to myself, right? Yep. All right. Well, guess you see, uh, seen one snowflake, you've seen them all, right? Oh, wait a minute. Isn't that com like completely the antagonist of what they say about snowflakes? Is every single one is unique, and I'm like, same one, you see them all. Well, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So, anyhow, guess I'll wrap it up. Hope you're enjoying the, uh, to drive along with me here. So, see y'all down the road. See ya. Oh, all right. So, I'm bringing you back in here, and I'm just doing this. Yeah, geez, look at all the bugs on the windshield, man. <laughs> just ignore that little bit down there if you can. So, uh, I just kind of want to make a record of what I just saw. So, in the opposite lanes of travel, I 80 westbound. I just saw the biggest, the biggest, longest truck with the sleeper, and you can't even really call it a sleeper at that point, that I've seen yet. And uh, on the trailer, I think it said like Buko or Budo. So, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know if we've all seen them, but the uh, reliable, Atlas and I think maybe Alliance is one where they got these trucks with just these massive extended sleepers right and I guess the whole point behind those are that uh, the drivers who work for those companies are typically out on the road for like two three months at a time so they basically have like this super extended sleeper on there with its own door you know that you can walk into and, you know, I mean, I can't imagine the, you know, the setup that they got in them, right? It's probably pretty elaborate inside, you know. Probably has a little kitchenette, whatnot, you know. Anyhow, what I just saw basically kind of just, you know, shrugs away the, uh, those, you know. I mean, this thing was, you can't even call it a sleeper at this point. This thing is a, a motorhome, basically. I mean, it was huge I mean it was so big the guy might as well have a a uh, a uh, uh, you know a grassy yard on his catwalk with a gate you know and a, and a fence and a barbecue you know and a little fire pit on his catwalk behind his cab you know like I mean, this thing had to, I guarantee you, this truck had a shitter in it. I'll put it like that. It probably has a kitchen. And uh, the sleeper is probably just a bedroom with a door. Um, and I mean, just, oh my God, the thing was just long as hell. I can't freaking believe it. Buko, I think. I think it was Buko or Budo, I'm not sure, but shit. So, I mean, this guy... He's out for six months. Uh, hell with it. That's home. That is, you know, he's not out for six months. He's just at home all the time, everywhere he goes. He's at home. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'll do it. I would do it. Yep. I mean, uh, articulating that thing into uh, some truck stops. Is, you know, you got to be very selective on where you fuel and things like that. Uh, and where you pull off and all those sort of things. But uh, yeah, that that was pretty cool. It was huge. It was huge. The truck itself, not including the trailer, had to have been, I don't know. I don't even know. It's hard to even venture, I guess. Um, 25, 30 feet long, I'm guessing. I don't know. Probably more than that. I just don't even... It's hard to even venture a guess, honestly. It was just massive. Huge. And then, I mean, like... Well, if the trailer is on, it's 53 feet. This thing was... From... From 
rear axle at least a third or probably a half of a 53 foot trailer or so I don't know it's probably bigger than that because that would only be 26 some odd foot so it was probably two thirds the length of the trailer I don't know like I said I'm not I yeah it's kind of difficult to even venture a guess as to how long that thing was it was just massive incredible yep I mean there's people <laughs> who have smaller accommodations uh, that are that are permanent fixtures into the ground you know like you know who pay a thousand dollars or you know fifteen hundred dollars you know two thousand dollars in some places for a permanently fixed thing that they have to pay for and that guy's getting paid to live there <laughs> I'll do it I put my hand up right now I'm like yep I'll do it that was pretty cool yep that was pretty cool so anyhow yeah I just kind of wanted to document that that was uh, you know of course it would have been great to get it on camera but that was an impossibility so yep pretty amazing I can't imagine I mean he's probably got you know uh 250 gallon tanks or maybe four I, I don't know yeah maybe 400 gallon tanks or something on there I mean because you would need to you know because you're you know the place where you go to fuel are probably so limited I would imagine you'd want to keep you know four or five hundred gallons of fuel so you have to stop less frequently you know and just you pull off where you can pull off when you can pull off maybe uh, a handful of locations across the United States or something, I don't know. Pretty amazing. So there you go. Wow, look at that sky, huh? Look at those clouds, pretty cool. We have, uh, at this point, we pretty well passed up the, uh, the uh, dusting of the snow pretty well behind us but then again some of that stuff off off to the right looks like it could uh yeah it's definitely dumping some snow it looks like over there and uh once we get to Cheyenne I'm going to be heading south so yep we'll probably end up seeing some of it I imagine And it is now down to uh, 37 degrees. The time, local time now is 6.06 .06 and it is still Sunday, October 11th. I have 165, 164 miles left to go to reach Denver. 71 miles to go to reach uh, I-25. And we are at an elevation of 7,384 feet. So I think that's about that. So, um, yep, call it a wrap. I'll see you all down the road. See ya.